Line her up, let her rip. Right, we are here with Ultimate RC Events. We have got this gigantic boat. Uh, it's called Push the Limits Blair. Do you want to fill us in a little bit on this guy? Um, just very briefly, how does one get a, a hull like this? First of all, how are you, Vass? Very good, mate. Good. <laughs> good to see you again. Um, this is a Mystique 5000, so it comes out from Germany. Germany. Um, it's an MHZ hull and it's an 1875, not to be mistaken with the 1850. So that's the length of them. The common hull is the 1850. The 1875 is actually slightly longer. Slightly longer. Um, and slightly wider, more, more made for speed running. All right, do you want to pop that, uh, that yeah, lid so we can have a quick look underneath the hood, so to speak? Look at this thing. So briefly in here, you've got two MGM 400 amp controllers. So that's those guys just there. Yep, you've got the LMT 3080 motors, which are the size of uh, Coke cans. So <laughs> these guys um, just two there. Two which you just said. You've got the receiver down the back. Uh, you've got some batteries here. What are these little batteries for? So that battery actually powers that servo and receiver alone. So it's got a Beck in it. Okay, so um, there's a separate, separate BEC. Yep which makes sure that servo gets maximum amount of punch because we need a lot of kilo torque on a rudder of a oh. boat that's around 15 kilos and capable of 200 kilometers an hour we've currently done 154 kilometers an hour look at that so inlay it's an inlay kevlar hull so it's a so that's what we're looking at here yep so that's all it is uh armored if i'm saying that correctly i'm probably saying it wrong but uh same as what a bulletproof vest has Okay. Uh -huh. So pretty serious stuff. What's with all the pool noodles and everything that you've got going on here? Uh, so buoyancy, if we were to sink this thing, so we don't want to sink this thing, but yeah. unfortunately we have actually flipped the boat. And when you're talking, this boat is upwards of around $7,000. Um, okay. And that's doing it on the cheap. <laughs> um, these controllers alone are a couple of thousand bucks. So what you try to do is if it does flip and take water on, all these buoyancy keep the thing as as float as possible and give us so a fighting chance. Sink. Yeah, and gives us a fighting chance. You're going to get them wet, but you don't want to soak them, soak them, and they yeah. um, they can actually survive getting wet. Uh, so this is just to keep it as a float as possible if something was to go wrong. All right, now the servo. I notice you've only got a single servo here, and you got like a pull pull system. Is that correct? Yeah. So you're running to a, to a single rudder. Running single rudder on a triangular pull pull system. So there's two bars that go through there that are actually connected to a cable. Then the cables go through and back and they're tensioned quite quite tight to um, that okay to give you maximum amount of rudder hold so the main thing with this speed machine is we need the rudder to stay as still as possible or we'll get a tail wag yep um, which is why also we need a very high kilo standing torque so not so much when it's operating torque yeah just it's just static needs to torque hold like. that position yep uh, now you've got a lot of tubing and everything here so can you explain the water pickup for these just very briefly like yeah, how does easy. that work so underneath there's two pickups um per side so each side has exactly the same thing so i'll explain this side that's on the other side as yep. well two pickups just under here one pickup goes into the motor and out of the motor so it doesn't do okay, any so other that's, stuff so that'll be that'll be in there so there's your pickups there yep and then you've got one that goes motor in and then out through the side correct yep and then that the other pickup out goes to the speed controller you've got and out. that comes through here in there out through this hose and out to and the out side. the side so you've and got I two holes on this side for the same thing correct and two holes on that side correct. and obviously there's a, a twin pickup down the bottom there as well and okay to keep the system as cool as possible nothing goes through so some people out there might have smaller radio controlled boats they'll go into the motor then maybe into the speedy as well then yeah. out the problem with a big boat like this that's generating a lot of heat is that can be picked up um, okay. and heat on heat is not cool. We want to keep everything as cold as possible.
9,500 milliamp hour six cells running two of them in series to give you 12S per side. Okay, so you got 12S on this motor, Yep. 12S on that motor. Correct, yep. So you can see the connections here. Two batteries there and two batteries there. Yep. Roger Dodger. Now, just a quick question. Yep. Um, the batteries are going there now. Was this a custom hull or like, did you have to set all this up? Was there a way that you could work out where everything was going to go? Like, how did that all came about? So these I mean, hulls... What, why are the batteries not further forward or further back? So these, these hulls have a center, center of gravity. So there's, there are stepped hull. So there's step first, second, third. We actually count them from the rear. So first, second, then third step. Uh -huh. Some may not even count that as a step, but it is. Between the first and the third, so this second step, there's a center of gravity just like an aeroplane. So okay. they're like a flying wing. So when I built this, you just get a hull. That's all you get. You get all, you buy all your gear. You mock up all your gear in there, not fixed, to get the center of gravity right. So you have to put everything in as weight, even your batteries, your trays, even this small battery. Everything has to be placed in. And then a PVC pipe's placed under that step two to get the center of gravity right. Okay. So it's so important to get the center of gravity right in these boats. So the placement of all this obviously has a purpose. It's not just yep. randomly put on the boat. No, it's not. Everything, little, everything has a <laughs> yeah. Everything has a bit of a purpose. Yeah. And the mounting for the motors. Can you explain a little bit about that as well? Yeah, how, so how's, that, how's that been done? That's basically what happened there. Um, is there's two three mil carbon sheets that have been put together. So there's one single three mil as a backing brace to the motor. Yep. And then these two have actually been placed together and wedged together and glued together um, to create a six mil plate. Okay. Um, so research told me that a six mil carbon plate was a nice rigid way of holding those motors because they're producing upwards of uh, 40 horsepower to combined okay. or 60 kilowatt. Wow, That's okay. A, I mean, small cars have that sort of power. Yeah, so it's a lot of power. This has got a, a lot of grunt. And when you're trying to screw big props in a war in the water they're going to create a lot of torque so that's that's how they're held and they're held with a very special glue that um it's called side grip for anybody who wants to know but uh it's uh it's a, a glue that i had to research to try and find the best adhesive but that would also take vibration okay so that's how that's all mounted so where are the props we run without props fast no <laughs> what we do is the reason is it's actually a real silly thing that we we spoke about a bit earlier vast but the props aren't kept in the boat because the cables. That shaft. Just hold the hand behind this, so. The cables just there. The, a lot of people run these are just bigger cables in a in a radio, radio control boat this size, but they can suffer memory. So they sit in the boat as a curve. Okay. And if they sit over time like that, they can actually hold that curve. So if you were to take them out, they'd have a curve in them. Problem is, you end up with oscillation. And that, and that pre yeah, that prevents oscillation. Okay. When you're running so. 40 horsepower, spinning these at a stupid rate of RPM. You don't want vibration. So after every run, these are taken out. Okay. The other reason they're taken out is a lot of people, and myself included, there's water that stays in here. They're not actually made not to have water in them. They'll have water in them. That just corrodes and rusts. So we take them out of every run, blow all the water out, and then these will get re-greased, which they're ready to so go. So blow right all in. the water out while you just put the uh, put an, hose, air hose. an air hose straight in there. And blow them and straight Blow out. everything out of the So of we the don't have tubing. any corrosion. Okay. And that's your grease here, so you're going to grease yep. them up now, fit so them in. Literally. Just with your finger. They just get marine grease. So I choose to use marine grease. Not everybody does, but it is a bit impervious to water. So, and that down the shafts. For a, And this is done every run. Yep. So taken out, cleaned off, um, inspected. So we'll see if the bearings, the bushings rubbing or on the, on the shafts. Yep. And then that one, if I get them in the right order, I always muck this up. So you got counter rotating props, I presume? Correct. So that spins inwards? That one, yeah, spins inwards. So that spins inwards and then the other one will spin inwards as well that way? Yep. Okay.
my boat out. Nice. Do that one more time if you can. <laughs> Jeff is a little kid. Go deep, go deep. Go deep so you can wind it up. That's it, turn it around. Line her up, let her rip. Yes, that's the one. And there we go. Blair, how do you feel about that run? Mate, like I always do, it's absolutely an adrenaline rush. Running a boat that fast and with that much power is fun. How honest. much does this boat actually weigh? Because I don't think we, we talked about well, that. Yeah, we mentioned it earlier on, but it's only rough. We haven't actually weighed it properly, so we haven't put it on scale. So we're estimating around 15 kilograms. That's fully loaded? Uh, yeah, it's be fully loaded. It may be more than that, but it's, okay. it's, I had a guess and a pretty good educated guess, around 15 kilograms. But I'll get back to you on the proper weight, but um, it needs a bit of weight actually to stay down. Okay. Um, as you would have seen in those runs, it, yeah. it, it's, it's wanting to get How out. How do you feel about the run? I mean, you had a, it was a bit late in the afternoon, so yeah, we, you had a bit of fun, here, Blair. It's, it's uh, been a 33 degree day today. It's probably still 28 now, and there was a whole lot of paddle boarders and kayaks down there, so a little bit nervous running those sort of speeds with people around. So it was... Um, but they stayed, they stayed well clear of our path while we yep. were doing that, so that was good. It was a yeah. good five minutes or so. Yeah, and we kept, we're only here for a very short time, and yeah. then we're gone. So, um, and a new spot, Bass. So I haven't run today. We challenged ourselves to run in a different a different line. Because you're normally at the end of the run, right? Yep. So, so you're you, normally to the left of where we normally run. There's another platform there, so you, you're sort of seeing the boat come towards you. Correct. Now you're in the middle of the run and going left to right. And as, as we said off camera, I was like, oh my God, it moves like this. I've been seeing it coming towards me. So I know it's moving, but I, I've always done that. And then today we decided to get a different line to get a much longer length in yeah. the run. Um, and now I've, of course, I'm seeing the speed a lot more from side on. Um, so that changed it up a little bit too. And I love it. I want to continue running like that. Yeah. So we want to come back when it's quieter. Um, Maybe we'll do an early morning uh, meetup next time. And yep. Yeah, um, definitely. The sun's not glaring sun, in their if face, anything the sun the will be thing. behind us the water will be calmer hopefully and uh you'll be able to get up on plane and really keep the pedal peg for, for, for a little bit longer try and get maybe break 100 mile an hour well that's that's so at the moment our target's 100 mile an hour mark for all the overseas people we want to hit the 100 mile an hour that's the magic mark for a lot of them we're about 10 k's away roughly yep. give or take yep so but you have you have gone faster than today 154 kilometers an hour is the fastest we've gone on the these props okay. but we have in the background our octura two blades ready to go they're the 200 kilometer an hour props okay um so we still want to max these out we think we can do better than 154 um and max these props out but we are close to the limit of what these are Okay. the octuras are there mate and 200 we know this hull can actually do 200 it's not it's not an ask of it hasn't been done before it actually has over in europe um so we want to do it and that will, that will be moving this thing is an absolute beast so big it sounds i'm hoping that the camera does it justice but 
chances are it doesn't. I mean, we've seen videos. I've seen the videos that you've done and seeing it live and hearing it live is very different. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, to understand this, so you hear this in a lot of YouTube videos, the scale, the size, the sound doesn't do it justice on camera. You're not going to be able to do it justice. Sometimes we put on Facebook our page that we'll be heading out. So there is a chance to come and see us. Um, you know, definitely we head out again, Bass, we might put that out to your yeah. people to say that it, it's going to be out. It's a very rare boat to see. There's not a lot of them around. Um, so it's a cool thing to watch. So hopefully we can break some records in front of some people. It'll be absolutely awesome. I like the little rig that you've done here, the little trolley to help you carry it. Because, yeah, uh, just... yeah, walking all the way from here to the lake, uh, carrying 15 kilos would not be a lot of fun. So <laughs> awkward size too. <laughs> yeah, so. So I'll just lift up and go in the van on its uh, on its bottom, all strapped up, and then we collapse the the middle dolly up the, the old beach goer. Well done, good stuff. No problems. Thanks very much for uh, you know showcasing this on the channel, Blair. Really yeah. appreciate it, mate. Thanks for coming down and seeing us, and finally no getting down my neck of the woods and. Yeah. More action to come. I'm sure we'll uh, we'll <laughs> tee this up again and, and break, well, hopefully we'll break the 100 mile yeah, 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 with those props. It's going to happen. All righty. Thanks, Blair. No problem. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Catch ya.